My next guest has been writing about exactly this issue. Dr. Michael Hudson joins me now. He is the president of the Institute for the Study of Long-Term Economic Trends, ILET, ISLET, author of numerous books, including his most recent, Trade, Development, and Foreign Debt. Dr. Hudson, welcome back. Thank you very much, Tom. It's great to have you here. Uh, do you see what's going on here, this war, as a natural consequence of capitalism? Is this what Marx described, kind of the cancer stage of capitalism? And would you use the word war to, to describe it? Well, it is a class war, certainly, uh, but it's not the kind that Marx described. Marx was uh, much too optimistic. Uh, he thought that industrial capitalism was going to turn banking into a pro-industrial productive endeavor. Uh, he certainly described how parasitic banking was of his day, but he thought that somehow uh, the forces of industrial capitalism were going to make banking the way it was in uh, industrial Germany and other countries, and that banking would extend credit to enterprises for a capital investment uh, to hire labor and increase the system. But that's not what's happened. What's happened is something that even Marx wasn't cynical enough to dream about. Uh, banking has simply added debt onto the economy's real estate. It's indebted com companies by letting outsider corporate raiders take over corporations, loot the employment uh, stock, op option, uh, stock ownership programs, like uh, you saw at the Chicago Tribune under Sam Zell. One half of employee stock ownership programs have been wiped out altogether because what you've seen is something that was not developed until the early 1950s, and that was pension fund capitalism. Uh, Margaret Thatcher, like General Pinochet's word for it, labor capitalism. And the idea was a new way of, of exploiting labor, not by employing it and uh, selling its products at a markup, but by um, uh, for, uh, taking off, skimming off part of its wages as savings, saying these are your savings, but you're not going to have control of them. We're going to turn them over to your employers, and the employers can uh, do whatever they want, trust them, that's in your interest. And of course, the employers used uh, these uh, uh, funds to take over other companies, to underfund them, uh, and simply to go back to the labor unions and the workforce and say, well, look, uh, we've promised you all these pensions, we're holding the money, but we're going to go bankrupt. And uh, given the fact that we control the government, if we go bankrupt, uh, the governments and the courts are going to tell us, pay Wall Street pay the 1 percent, but the 99 percent, the workers whose savings are in the pension, are at the very bottom of the list of complainers. So what they do is they tell the workers, if you don't change your pension plan from a defined uh, uh, benefit program to a defined contribution plan, where all you know is what goes in, you don't know what goes out, uh, then we're going to go bankrupt and wipe you out altogether. So uh, that's the kind of politics that's being played, and it's a financial war of the uh, Wall Street, not only against labor, but against uh, industrial capitalism. It destroys the market, and now they're waging this fight against pensions on the national level. Uh, they've got President Michael Hudson? I I think we just I think we just lost him but the point while well, we try to get him back the point I think that he's making here and it's a really really important one is that and well he said Marx is an optimist I mean that that's really a pretty amazing thing because Marx was just looking at an industrial economy he didn't he, he wasn't looking forward and seeing that the banksters could actually control the political system to re to rejigger the rules of capitalism, to literally change the rules of capitalism in ways that basically allowed the bankers to take everything over. Dr. Hudson, are you back with us? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Thank you for, for rejoining us. Um, is this the cancer stage of capitalism? Is this is are we looking at something that is leading inevitably to a collapse, or is this simply the yeah. new normal that's going to go on for another ten generations? Uh, it's the new normal that is leading very quickly to a collapse, and the reason is that uh, the pensions are all invested in the financial sector, and the financial sector is not using the money that uh, labor is setting aside. It's not using it for new means of production. It's using it to, for, to offshore, to buy companies abroad. It's using it to buy other companies here. Uh, but it's not using it to invest in capital, means of production that employ labor. So uh, what it's doing, the financial sector, is simply loading down the economy with debt. 
Uh, it's lending to assets that are already in place. It's lending to real estate. It's lending to companies. And you have the debt ratio to income going up and up. And the idea is that somehow the economy can borrow its way out of debt that somehow the magic of compound interest is going to enable pension funds uh, and Social Security to earn enough interest to pay off uh, labor without actually any, in, any production or even employment from taking place. And this is a completely doesn't, fictitious... Does, doesn't this even go way beyond pension funds or Social Security or anything like that? Isn't, isn't this really at the heart of the fireization, the, the, the financialization of our economy. We were, we're moving from an industrial economy to a finance-based economy. And in that finance-based economy, basically the people who run and control finance are skimming whatever they want off the top and screwing the rest of us? Yes, that's exactly what's happening. And uh, if uh, the idea that you can make money on finance without production, without producing an economic surplus, without a market of labor buying the products that it produces, you're going to have a shrinkage, shrinkage, so that the U.S. economy is going to end up looking like Greece or Ireland or Iceland or Latvia, which are held up as uh, models for what we can do. Uh, right now, there's a lot of discussion about why can't America tighten its belts like the Latvians have. Well, if America was like Latvia and imposed austerity and uh, a budget surplus, uh, you would have to have 20 million Americans between the age of 20 and 35 emigrate to other countries. Where are they going to emigrate to? They don't mm. even teach children schools. Yeah. So it's going Canada, to be a Canada won't take them, and, and Mexico doesn't need them, and it's, it's yeah. Uh, so how do you expect this to play out over the next few years? The economy is good. That's what everybody's wondering. The economy is going to shrink and shrink and shrink. And the question is whether people are going to go out in the streets like they have in Greece and just protest uh, or whether there is going to be uh, an actual response saying it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, there are other ways of uh, doing things. And I think what has to happen is the labor unions have to take the lead in saying, look, we are going to manage our own pensions, not the way that the corrupt uh, unions have done, but somehow the, the pension funding and Social Security and Wall Street have to be reorganized along what people expected 100 years ago. Everybody expected savings to be uh, sent, uh, spent on new factories, new means of production, uh, increasing output and employing labor. There has to be a renewal of classical economics. Does that involve changing the rules of the game, essentially? Sure does, because classical economics ended up with, with Marx, and uh, people don't want to see where the logical culmination of being productive is. Uh, they, would rather, it's e they, they would rather think that it's easier to make money in the stock market and by turning your money over to Wall Street and hedge funds. But as the pension funds in uh, Orange County and uh, Alabama have noticed, the Wall Street looks at them as uh, just suckers and wants to just uh, take, take their money just like Sam Zell did at the uh, Chicago Tribune. Do you think that there's any possibility, we have just a little less than a minute, sir, do you think there's any possibility that the Obama administration has figured this out and that they might, you know, essentially put a stop to it? Uh, it has figured it out, but instead of putting a stop to it, it's helping Wall Street take the money and running. They fed the a quantitative easing free of the Federal Reserve, gives free money to the banks, and all this money is going into the BRIC countries. It's being gambled on foreign exchange. So the Obama, the Obama administration is giving the banks enough money to jump ship like rats and leave the economy. Well, is that the out. administration or is that the Fed that's doing that? What? Is that the administration or is that the Fed that's doing that? Because they're different things. That's the, that's the Obama administration's de uh, decision. Take a, he's ex accepted what his campaign contributors tell him to do. Right. Uh, and his campaign contributors are on Wall Street. I see. Uh, and if you read Neil Borofsky's bailout or Sheila Baer's uh, uh, book about what she did at the FDIC, you see how Obama was, was putting uh, Tim Geithner and other Wall Street lobbyists just in charge. And, and is continuing to put Wall Street guys in charge there. Dr. Hudson. I'm sorry, we're flat out of time. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Okay, quite welcome. I appreciate it.